Today on The Pulse, we have a powerful and provocative interview with former Philadelphia Eagle and current NFL executive Troy Vincent. He shares his stories about domestic violence and his advocacy to make sure the world ultimately is a better place. But since we recorded that interview, there was the situation with Buffalo Bills safety Damar Hamlin that the whole world was talking about and Troy Vincent in his capacity with the NFL was asked numerous questions about. We thought it was only appropriate for us to get a comment from him before we started today's show. Uh, the comments that he made as it relates to Damar Hamlin were fairly simple. He went on to say that while the game is guided by policy best practices and guidelines, the only guideline that mattered that night was the health and wellness, the life of Damar Hamlin. He expanded upon that and said the emergency action plan was executed to perfection by those who rehearse, practice, and train for in-stadium health emergencies. And closed by acknowledging that we need to recognize the power of prayer by players, coaches, staff, and fans in the stadium and those watching around the world. We appreciate him taking the time to add that to today's episode of The Pulse. And now let's get right to our discussion with former NFL player and NFL executive, Troy Vincent. Good morning and thank you for having me. Thank you for finding some time to speak with me. Absolutely. It's, it's our pleasure uh, to have you on. And it, it's, we'll start with you and I were having a conversation kind of before we got started. And I told you, that in doing the research to talk to you, as a football fan, I thought I knew everything. But the more research I did, there's, there's so much more that you've been involved in advocating for, even, even pre-football. Uh, is it surprising to you that the more people talk to you, they kind of find out that there's a lot more than perhaps they knew? No, I'm not surprised. And, and especially when, in the world of athletics, when attrition and rosters and turnover and we live in a society where the consumption of information is quick. You get what you want, you look at clickbait, and then you move on when I truly believe, though, that every individual, whether they're an athlete, influencer, it doesn't matter, that everyone has a gravity of, of a foundation about who they are, mm -hmm. they truly represent. But most of the time, most aren't willing to do uh, additional research or gather additional information to find out exactly who kind of what drives people. I, I'm not surprised, but um, it is one of the reasons actually why my wife and I, we created just so that people can have a background information of myself, not self promotion, but TroyVincent.com. Yeah. Oftentimes I'm speaking, doing hundreds of speaking engagements throughout the year, teaching classes. And you see people looking like, who is this guy again? Yeah. Where from but it allows people to just get a little bit more information about who's in front of you or who you just heard from so it, it that's really interesting that you start there because i obviously was at troyvincent.com uh, and in reading it a lot of times people's kind of life is is linear and you can start in a certain place and kind of, in looking at that i was like where do we start there's very much a faith first there's very much a you go back to your your grandparents and and kind of uh, shaping you before some of us may have known you, Trenton, uh, as you said, a local guy. Where do you start with kind of defining how you got started on this path? I was raised by a World War II veteran in the city of Trenton, um, laborers, um, people that pay taxes, worked hard, and, and we made the best out of, you know, our, our situation. That's who I am. And then I was, I'm, I'm driven. I live a life of faith. I gave my life over to Jesus Christ at the age of 16 for several reasons. I fell in love with Jesus at that time, and those biblical principles has really helped guide me through my life. And then the coaching. You know, I had the gift of athletics uh, th where I was able to do things that other people couldn't do. That was a God-given ability that, that he allowed me um, to have during my time as, as an athlete. But the coaches and the people who influenced me the most, I can't forget about those individuals. So I have an appreciation for the coach and the impact, especially for those who are fatherless mm -hmm. or for those who may be missing something from their current father. The, the impact that the coach has on an individual's life. So Bill, I said a whole lot to just say, 
it's just so important for my children to know that we are standing on the shoulders of some great individuals from our family. I'm gonna talk NFL for just a minute because that may be why a lot of people at least initially know you. Uh, so through your career, you then went on to work in the front office, currently work in the front office of the NFL. Are you unique in kind of being that person who has a lot more going on in their life and things that they're working towards, particularly in kind of with athletes? Um, or do we need to take a longer look at who people are? No, I would say I'm not unique at all. I just made some choices in life um, that just allowed me to put me in this position, but they were just simple choices that any athlete, uh, male, female, doesn't matter what sport, frankly, any individual, and I share that all the time. I'm not unique. I just made some choices in life that allow me to, to put me in positions to still be part of the game that I love, um, to still father my children to be a, a quality husband, and now uh, a pop-pop, a grandfather. So I'm not unique.